Welcome to Inspire Me with Jay, a podcast focusing on meditation, the near-death experience, and all things spiritual. Hello, this is Jay Spillers with Inspire Me with Jay. I've got Jacqueline Wilkinson as my special guest. Jacqueline, how are you? I'm great, thank you, Jay. And how are you? I'm doing okay. Um, Good. So you do channeling meditation. What exactly is that? Okay. Um, well, it started um, in January, actually. Um, for a long time, I've just been, my prayer has been, how can I bring more love and peace into the world? And how can I touch people's lives? And um, during one of my meditations, um, I felt the very strong presence of an angel with me. And she came forth with her name being Sarah. And um, I just hear her words. I feel her energy. Um, it's very, very gentle. And it's loving. And um, I got the sense that I needed to just offer personalized, guided meditations and messages. So it's very specific to whatever a person is going through at that particular time. And I connect with her and um, she just speaks through me. So I just um, say whatever I hear. Has she ever told you anything about, like, um, God or what angels are or anything like that? Well, certainly, I think in terms of God, um, I've always had a deep belief in God um, and a real connection. I feel it's in my heart. I feel it is who we all are, actually. I feel that divinity in the people around us. Um, so yes, I suppose that's it. And in terms of angels, um, I think we're all aware that we have our own guardian angel when we're born and the angel is with us. Um, but the angels are there, they're in the Bible. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's something I think that most people are aware of and we can connect with them. Whenever we need to, they are there to help. Is Sarah your personal guardian angel? Sorry, Sarah. Um, <clears throat> possibly, you know, I haven't had absolute clarity on that. I just know that she's Sarah. <laughs> um, but yeah, it just feels a very strong connection, but it feels very different to when I would think, oh, I, I want to just connect with my guardian angel. Um, there was certainly a feeling of warmth and love, but this feels very different. Now, the difference may be that the connection is different. <clears throat> I'm not sure. Does, does Sarah talk to you only during your meditation, or do you, does she just talk to you throughout the day? Well, it's very much, um, I connect with her, um, but I do feel her presence. Um, if I am going through the day and there is something that I need an answer to, um, and I ask, I do feel I, I hear, I hear her. And I so, certainly feel her. So angels, do they take both possibly male and female forms then? Yes, I think um, I think they do. I think angels actually are neither, <laughs> but I think for our understanding, um, and they will appear to people <clears throat> differently. Um, but it, it's it's really what we feel comfortable with. So some people may not see a form. Some people may not see the wings and all the pictures, um, like the pictures are depicting them. Some people will just see a light. Uh, and so that light is neither male nor female. It's an energy. 
What do you see with Sarah? I see, um, which was really amazing. I got a very strong sense she was Irish. <laughs> um, I got this image of this red hair and these beautiful, beautiful blue eyes. Um, and maybe that is just what I needed at that time, was to see in that way. Well, do you think Sarah is, was she created as an angel or was she a person at some point that became an angel? Um, I'm not sure if she uh, embodied as a human. Um, and I shall probably ask that question. <laughs> I will ask that of her. I'm, I, it's not something I've actually thought of. Does, um, does Sarah tell you about uh, future events or anything like that? No, um, it's been very specific um, to whoever is needing answers to some issues that they're dealing with in their life. So it's never been that general. Um, I've been doing guided uh, meditations with the messages um, for people who are needing answers to something that they're dealing with, um, whether it's financial issues or it's something to do with low self-esteem or those sort of things. So it's very, very personalized. Is an angel and a spirit guide the same thing, or are they different? I think they're the same thing. Yeah, I feel that they're the same. Hmm. Well, has Sarah ever talked about, um, like, Jesus or anything? Um, well, in the, in the uh, connections, very often, um, <clears throat> it is a connection to the divine. So the divine, which is God, which is all that is, really. Um, and Jesus, Mother Mary, these are all ascended masters. That they're all part of the divine because they're all one. We're all one. We're connected to them and they're connected to us. Hmm. Has Sarah ever talked about, um, like, so I've heard of people channeling alien entities. Does she ever talk about aliens or life on other planets or anything? No, no, we've never discussed anything um, like that. Um, and possibly because the connections have always been so very specific to a person's needs. Um, and yes, I'm sure these are questions that I can certainly ask and develop this connection with her. Um, as I say, it's relatively new. Um, we only really started doing the work with people from February. <clears throat> Have you done a lot of work with, with people since then? <coughs> Yes, I have. I have. Um, yeah, I've done about 10 uh, now. And um, the one thing that has really made me feel very happy about each one is they have felt deep love. They felt peace. They felt a connection and they've received answers. Um, and I feel that accomplishes exactly what I wanted to bring into, into this world, is the love and the peace. Is Sarah <clears throat> kind of similar to, have you ever heard of Abraham Hicks? Yes, I've heard named, of Abraham Hicks. Yeah, Esther channels this person named yes. Abraham Hicks. Is Sarah sort of like That's that right. for you? Um, yeah, I suppose in a way she is. Yes. Yeah, I suppose she is in a way. Do you think Sarah might be part of like your higher self or do you think she's a distinct being? 
she m more than likely could be part of my higher self. Um, and as I said, we're all one. Um, so yes, I don't think that's an absolute separation. <clears throat> well, prior to January, were you doing a regular meditation practice before encountering Sarah? Yes. Um, I have uh, been doing Reiki and um, energy healing for many, many years. And I was doing that in uh, Zimbabwe, where I lived. And we recently moved um, to the Netherlands. So I have continued with the meditations but um, wasn't actually doing anything with the Reiki healing uh, or that side of life, which I really enjoyed. But it's something to do with, I suppose, settling in, trying to find where everything is and, and how things work here. Um, and so it's been very much just my meditations, which I do daily and I do twice a day. How long are your meditations usually? Um, in the morning, it's about an hour. In the evening, about an hour. Um, and during the day, I feel that when I can get a moment, I connect. And that may be just 10, 15 minutes. <laughs> do you listen to music when you meditate or do you do silence? Um, sometimes I listen to music, um, but a lot of the time it's in silence. Hmm. Yeah. And sometimes I felt in the past, like I would ask questions and I would get answers from something that seemed like it was outside of me. But then like the past few years, I just feel like it's more of my own voice when I meditate to get answers or mm -hmm. things like that. Have you ever ha experienced things like that? <clears throat> well, I think the, um, I don't know, when you meditate, uh, do you drop into your heart? Do you feel in your heart? I, I kind of feel when, when I'm in my heart space, um, the mind isn't involved. And then it's a lot easier to um, accept what's coming through. Um, I think when, yeah, if I'm in my mind, then I think I'm controlling it. And um, it's maybe my words or what I think I need to hear, or <laughs> which can be frustrating because it may not actually work out as I thought I heard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Does Sarah give you lessons on how to live or what the meaning of life is? Um, a lot of the messages that have come through for people, um, and it seems this is a common theme with every message, is love. That we are love, that we need to be in our heart and that we are connected to the divine. Mm. And I think that is a, a very strong message and it comes through in every, every meditation. Well, I talk a lot about um, the near-death experience and the emphasis is always love. And then of course, like the New Testament, the emphasis is love too. Yes. Have you ever like, gotten into discussions about what happens after death or anything with Sarah? No, I haven't. I haven't got into that. No. Another interesting avenue to explore. <laughs> yeah. Well, I just kind of remember like when I first got Alexa and I'd ask her all kinds of questions. It's like one of those... Mm -hmm. um, AI things. I just would think that yes. if you had an angel, you'd be asking her all kinds of questions all the time. Yes and no, because um, when you really, really think about it, um, a lot of the 
the mind chatter and the questions um, aren't really necessary all the time. There's a lot of stuff that, yeah, I found I asked a lot of questions all the time, but now there's a lot of a, um, a knowing, a deep knowing. So there's not a lot of constant questions. Mm. But yes, you know, there are some questions that are a bit weird, like, am I really going to find a parking? Am I? Is this really going to happen? Mm -hmm. And yeah, okay, it's going to happen. <laughs> those, those, those kind of... <laughs> yeah. Do you do most of your work online or in person with people? Um, it's all been online. Um, except for a few... Um, well, it's only two people that I know here in the Netherlands that I have done this for. But otherwise, it's all been online. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm still trying to, yeah, I guess, suppose, get to know people. Um, and it's also um, a language thing. Yeah, so Sarah's got to help me with the Dutch here. <laughs> <laughs> Have you um, seen any miracles? Because you said sometimes healing comes through Sarah to various people. Yes. Um, and it, no one's come with anything uh, physical that I've dealt with. Um, it's all been emotional issues. It's been um, one of the ladies... Uh, had a practice and um, she had, she just wasn't getting any more clients and her business had just not nothing was happening and we did the channeling and um, she said it really helped her tremendously and a couple of weeks later she'd started um, something that she never even thought she would ever do and she she's now doing something and is loving it and things are flowing in a new and different direction. Um, other people have felt very low, despondent, um, lack of self-worth, and they've said that they felt so much better afterwards. They feel loved. They feel they feel better about themselves. Um, so I do believe that there is positive changes that comes from it. So, um, do they ever see Sarah themselves? Um, only one of uh, one of the ladies um, a couple of weeks later emailed and said when she was doing her meditation, um, she saw an angel and she said she was sure it was Sarah. Um, so that, um, and that was lovely. <laughs> do you, do you encounter Sarah every day or are there some days where you don't see her or hear her? Um, there's some days where life is busy and I'm, I'm running around and I'm just doing what everybody else is just doing. <laughs> I have a job, um, children, there's all sorts of things going on, um, so, yeah, there may be days where I, I, I go through the day without, but in the evening, in the quiet time, I definitely connect. Yeah. Mm. And it may not be to ask for anything. It may not be anything specific, but just thank you. Mm. Just thank you for being there. How long had you meditated before you encountered Sarah. How many, was there a number of years that you've been meditating? Oh, yes. Yeah, I've been meditating for, um, wow, yeah. Ooh, it sounds awful, but yeah, like 30 years. <laughs> yeah. oh, when I think of it, so whew, <laughs> it shows my age. Um, <laughs> hmm. Not, you know, not, um, not as much as I'm doing now. Um, in the beginning, it was um, 
every now and again it, it wasn't every weekend it wasn't every day it was yeah when i thought about it and i think like most people when things were really reaching rock bottom um then i would think about it <laughs> when you do med channeling meditation for other people is there a draining on you emotionally you know because like sometimes people, no oh no, not at all, not at all, not in any way. And I, I always feel when doing this, it's like doing Reiki or healing work. Um, you're merely a channel. So you're not using your energy or anything within yourself. You are just a channel and allowing it to flow through. And as it flows through you, it heals, it heals too. Um, so no, it's not draining. Do you actually get energized from your meditations? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. So what kind of um, spiritual or religious background did you come from before encountering Sarah? Um, I was uh, raised a Catholic, uh, went to a convent. And, um, yeah, followed that uh, for a long time. And, um, and then I got married and had a couple of children. And one of my children uh, ended up with, well, ended up with autism. And that's when I began my search, I suppose, looking at alternative things, looking at at different religions, trying to find an understanding, trying to find out what this was all about. Um, I felt the Catholic way was a little bit too rigid, a bit too black and white. Um, and I couldn't accept that it was a sin, mine or his, or my son's. Um, and I just thought there's got to be more out there. and I, and that's where I started looking at all different religions. And I think it opened, it opened up a whole new world for me. Yeah. Does your son have like um, severe autism or mild? Um, it was very severe and um, yeah, very difficult to deal with. And I was really blessed. Um, in one of my prayers, just asking desperately, what can I do? Where can I go? And I came across a place in America, in Massachusetts, and uh, went over there and did a course. And uh, came back and worked with him on the course. And um, it, it was amazing, just the changes in his life. And then um, from there, I just felt I hadn't been given that experience just for me so I started a little school and was working with other children taking them through the similar program and had the same amazing results um, and yeah that's that's been a passion <laughs> but it's it's not been my core a job unfortunately but it's been something that I've done on a voluntary basis does he do meditation too no not at all no. No. Has Sarah helped and him at all? I do feel that she does. Um, but I think above the one thing probably that I've received from that is um, to honor his path. This is what he's chosen to experience. And I've got to respect that. Um <clears throat> And so this healing, when it's needed for certain things, but it's certainly not take away the autism because it's part of his purpose as well. Well, do you believe like people choose within like a life contract before they come to earth, possibly to experience certain physical or mental conditions as part of I their I think experience? they do. Um, personally, I do. <laughs> yeah, I, I do think that that has happened. I think that we we certainly come here 
um, with with an agreement. We've we've made an agreement. I think before we come, um, I think we've chosen our family. Um, yeah, before we've come. Mm. So, like in terms, sometimes of, I wonder why. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> So, like, in terms of love, has she given you, like, particular ways to express love or ideas, like certain things you need to do in your life or other people's lives that you've told them go in this direction mm, to express I think, love? Mm, I think um, <clears throat> it's very much a case of um, a being in your heart, feeling the love, and recognizing that that is who we are. It's the way we show up. Um, and if we are in our heart, we will be love and we will express love. It will just flow. Mm -hmm. uh, so let's um, go ahead and do the meditation now. Okay. <clears throat> Beloveds, what a joy to connect with you today at this time in this way. Oh, how precious you are to us. We love you. We thank you. Let's take a journey together now. Close your eyes. Take a deep breath and relax. Make yourself comfortable. Become aware of your feet. Feel them relax as this beautiful liquid gold light fills them. The liquid gold light travels up your legs, into your ankles, your calves. Relax. Into your thighs. Relax. Into your hips. Relax into your torso. Relax. Now into your shoulders, arms, neck, face and head. Feel your entire body relaxed and bathed in this exquisite healing nurturing light. I ask you now to connect with your heart. Connect fully with your beautiful sacred heart where truth and love <coughs> resides. Let the outer world fall away. What a precious divine gift you are. Such a wonder to behold. Oh, if you could see yourself as we see you, <laughs> you too would be in awe. We celebrate you, precious one, for all you do and all you are. You are love and light radiating at this time in such a unique and special way. 
I ask you now to become aware of your guardian angel. Your angel has been with you since you were born. Just become aware of this energy as she draws close to you. She now takes you in her loving arms and cradles you. Feel the love and safety and relax. It is safe to let go and totally relax into the space. As your angel holds you in this loving, nurturing embrace, she is asking you to hand over to her now all that is troubling you, <clears throat> all the fears, all the worries. Just hand them over now. Give them to her. Allow her to take them. Just release. Watch them leave your body. Your guardian angel rocks you gently and tells you how much she loves you. You are so loved. We are so proud of you, beloved. As she gently rocks you, you notice that you are now surrounded by a team of archangels. They draw close to you surrounding you and your guardian <coughs> angel. Feel the love that is pouring to you from them all. They raise their hands, palms facing you, and you can feel the healing energy, the love and the blessings pouring into your body, filling every single cell. Receive, beloved. Be open to receive. They each touch your head gently and bless you. Remain still and bathe in this love and these blessings. Allow them to anchor into every cell of your being. And when you are ready, open your eyes, become present in your body and go forth with the love and truth of who you truly are. Namaste. Thank you. Thank you.